But truth by then is not a prime, right? We can have the numbers in an array. Okay. So we can consider from every number that is not being seen. Okay. And then we can consider all its multiples. Okay. So for every number that we are seeing, we just need to know the power of this number that you is the greatest power of the number. So if we can find that in logarithmic time. Why do you need the power? No, okay. I am trying to utilize you, you the formula for some of the devices. Uh, Based on P1 power. Uh, okay, so first you are trying to find the prime factors and then you are trying to do it with every prime? No. And simply saying, a number can be expressed as P1 power A1 into P2. So if you are doing that, then isn't the number itself a divisor? So can you just add it simply? I mean, if you are considering number A and you are considering all its multiple, then you can simply add in those multiples A, right? Yes. And that would be your answer. When you, you are, when you are finished with the job, yeah, that's correct. This, uh, but I'll just explain it. Uh, this uh, start this method is a very famous method, which is known as C over astro things. Uh, this is one of the most widely methods that you will come you will use in number theory. Uh, can you move to the next slide? Yeah. So uh, this is a code for C, but I'll explain what it does. So what it what it does is that. Uh, whenever you are working with a sieve, you are actually working with an interval and you are calculating something for an interval. So like if I say that find out what are the primes that are there in an interval, then it, you can apply C for that. Like for this question, if I am asking you what is the sum of the divisors for every number in an interval, you can use C for that. So anything which involves interval, you can start thinking in, term of C, in terms of sieves. So what is the basic concept? Uh -huh. So let's say for now we consider the problem of uh, finding out what are the primes in a given interval and let's say just for sake of understanding that the interval is from 2 to something or 0 to something. So let's say I ask you a problem, what, is, what are the primes from 0 to 10 plus 6? Report me all the primes that are there from 0 to 10 plus 6, this interval. So what you, you do is you have an array. where error of i corresponds to number i. i-th element in the array corresponds to number i. And initially we assume that every number is a prime. We'll later on cancel out our possibilities. So every uh, entry in this this is a boolean value true. So true is filled up everywhere. So now what you do is we pick up uh, so this is 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, like this. So you pick up, pick up the first prime, which you already know that is 2, and you cancel every multiple of 2 for being prime. So what you do is, for every multiple, that is 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on, so on, you make this false. These numbers can now never be prime because they have 2 as their factor. This you understand, right? Now, you go to the next number, see if it is a prime. If it has true written on it, that, that means that it is a prime. And you do the same thing for this number again. So for all multiples of 3, you try cancelling it out. So for 3, 6, 9, you will have false. Then when you go to 4, it's already marked false, so you don't do anything. Now you go to 5 and you keep on doing this. So once you do that, once you're done with every number, the array that you will be left with will contain, of course, this has to be false. The array that you will be left with will contain true entry for all the prime numbers and false entry for all the composite numbers. You know what a composite number is. A, comp a number which is not prime is composite. So, this is what a basic sieve looks like. Uh, for the purpose of the problem that we discussed, you have to find out the sum of divisors. So what do you do is, again, since the computation is required in an interval, we use sieve kind of thing, okay? Okay, before we move on to this problem, let, let us discuss what would be the time complexity of this. So, can anyone make an attempt on uh, trying to find out what would be the time complexity of this sieve? Like for example, 6 
was visited once for two and was visited once for three. Okay, fine. Even if three into three, let's say you have twelve, right? So twelve will be vis visited for two. Okay, so let's say I have uh, fifteen. I mean, or forty-five. Why default is even numbers, even index? For two, you do it separately. Okay, fine. We do we do separately for two. So what I'm saying is, let's say I have a number 45. So 45 would be visited for three, and it will be visited for five as well. Is it right? So you're visiting it more than once, right? So see, uh, let's see what will be the complexity. Uh, is right. So what he says is that when you pick a number k. Since you are doing a jump of k each, the number of iterations that you will take would be n by k, right? So for two you do n by two iterations, for three you do n by three iterations. So the actual number of iterations that you do is summation of n over i. You can take n out because it is a constant. So it will be n into summation of one by i. Summation of one by i is harmonic sum. So your time complexity would be n into harmonic sum of the length of the interval. So let's just say it's h n. Uh, h n is order of log n. So the time complexity for the sieve is n log n. Does this make any sense? Good. So for the sake of the problem that we uh, discussed earlier, the summation of the divisors. What do we do is again ARRI corresponds to number i. You initialize the array to zero. You initialize the array to zero, or we won't be considering these two numbers. So let's forget about them. So now what do you do is. Or you can initialize every one, every uh, element to one, because one is the divisor of every number. Now what you do is again you pick a number, you visit all its multiples. So like for two, you visit four, six, eight, and all, and you add that number into that cell. So what you're doing is for every you're picking every number. We are adding that number to all its multiple. So that way, when you end up with the procedure, uh, a number will have the sum of all its divisors in that cell. If you instead add one instead of the number in that cell, you will get the number of divisors. If you add the number itself, you will get the sum of the divisors. Does this make any sense? So what you are doing is, you pick a number, you visit all its multiple. And you add that number into that cell. So, like when I visit four, I add two here. When I visit six, I add two here. When I visit add eight, I add two here. So, for when I pick three, for all its multiple, I add three. Three, six, nine will have one plus three. Accordingly, similarly for four, four and eight. Will have four added to them. So this way, each number after this whole process is complete will contain the sum of its divisors. Now what I am saying is, instead of adding the number here, if you add one here, then you will get the number of divisors of that number. This is another problem that you can try. Uh, in this case, our interval was from zero to some x, right? Let's say our interval is m comma n, m and n being integers, meaning fairly large. For this problem. Uh, let's say you have to calculate sum of divisors in a given range m comma n. It's not now. It's not zero comma n now. It's m comma n, where m and n are integers with the given limits. Sum of divisors up to n. Sum of divisors up to n. You can't create uh, as long as interval as zero to n because this is ten to nine. Normally, you'll get a memory as long as ten to seven or something. So if the, if the given range is uh, m comma n, 
So I can find all the numbers, all the prime numbers uh, below square root of n. Okay. So those will be the divisor. Yeah, square root would be less than about 30,000 or yeah. 32,000. Yeah, so in base you will find all the prime numbers. Fine. So I will take out each prime number and uh, go through only the interval m n. Okay. Okay, for each number x, if I take a prime number p, I will find the factor p power, the, the power of, power of the okay. Fine. Uh, so, fine, he has a solution. Okay, so I'll explain what they just said. This strategy is known as segmented sieve. Uh, what it is, I'll just explain. So, okay, uh, you know how to find out the prime still, let's say, the square root of n, which is 32,000 about. So, what you can first do is you can find all the primes which are less than 32,000 using a sieve that we discussed earlier. That much is fine, right? Once you're done with that, what do you do is, that you have instead have the interval of m to n here. Yeah. So now ARR of i corresponds to i plus m. Initially I in our array, ARR of i corresponded to i. Now ARR of i corresponds to i plus m. So this element corresponds to m, this corresponds to m plus 1, this m plus 2, and so on. Now when you pick an array uh, an, uh, prime p, you need to first find out what is the first multiple of p in this range. Smallest multiple of p in this range. Uh, that you can easily do because this would be m in minus m mod p plus p if m mod p is not equal to 0. So this actually gives you the first uh, least multiple of uh, p in this range. Once you get that, uh, you'll visit every cell and skip that many cells. So actually you're visiting all the uh, multiples of p in this range. And for every element, you try to find out what is the power of p in this for this element. You try to find out what is the power of p for this element. So like, let's say this m plus 2 was uh, my first multiple of p. So I keep on dividing m plus 2 with p as long as it's divisible. That way I get the power of uh, p in m plus 2. Once I get that, uh, and since I know the formula for number of devices is This part is independent from this part. So I can directly multiply the part for P1 into that cell. Getting this part? So I can keep on doing that for every multiple. The array that I will be left on, uh, left with at the end would contain the sum of devices for every number in that range. Does that make any sense? And then how do you decompose the large number into Large Sorry? How do you decompose the large whatever number into the large prime P1, P2, P3? Yeah, so uh, see the thing is uh, whenever you are considering a number n, either the num number n itself is a uh, either number n itself is a prime or at least one of its factor is less than uh, square root of n. Yeah. That is fine, right? So, if any of the cell contains 1, that means the number itself was prime. So, you do one more iteration and you add p to it. You can have one more array. I mean, I was just trying to explain to you the strategy. Uh, you can have one more array. You can keep on multiplying. Let, let's say the power of p1 was alpha 1. So, you can keep on p1, uh, multiplying p1 by alpha 1 into the cell. So, that will give you what is the product of the factors that we have seen till now. So, uh, now we can do an iteration in this and for every i, you can find out uh, i by cell of i. This will give you the factors which we haven't seen till now, which is the factors which are greater than the square root of n. 
right? So let, let's say if the number was 